Good morning, Nerd Fighteria. It's Saturday. I'm Amy, and today I'll be talking about Bermuda. Like the island itself, this video comes to you in nine parts. Firstly, this is Bermuda, a small island around a thousand kilometers from the western coast of America. Though it has a semi-tropical climate due to the warm current from the Gulf of Mexico, it's actually closer to New York than the Caribbean. Bermuda was originally formed as the continental plate drifted over a hot spot in the North Atlantic Ocean as an underwater volcano. Now extinct, it's an island nation with great diversity. Mostly, however, it is known for the infamous Bermuda Triangle, which is formed from coordinates in Florida and Puerto Rico, as well as its namesake. And this wouldn't be a good Bermuda video without some theories. So at the end of this video, I'll discuss some potential ideas. Secondly, Bermuda itself is made up of 181 islands, coming to around 53 kilometers squared, though the largest eight are what's connected with bridges to form the mainland. It's divided into nine parishes, Sands, Southampton, Warwick, Paget, Pembroke, Devonshire, Hamilton, Smiths, and St. George's. We have our capital city, Hamilton, not to be confused with Hamilton Parish, in Pembroke Parish, and about the center of the island. We have the Old Town and St. George's at the East End from when it was first settled. As it wasn't convenient for those on the West End of the island, it became a tourist destination instead. The other major place is Dockyard in the West. Mostly though, it's another tourist destination where many cruise ships stop. The towns and suburbs really blend together here. You can literally walk from one end of the island to the other in a day, something volunteers can do on a designated day to raise money, or the end to end. Throughout the island, you can find beautiful wildlife, as well as rich history and culture. This is also where I live, by the way, and I'm pretty lucky. Now on to part three, history. It was originally discovered by Portuguese explorer Juan de Bermudez in 1505. Guess what we named after him. Previously, navigators only knew it as the Isle of the Devils. This is because there were sharp coral reefs surrounding the island, causing many ships to be run aground and lost at sea. In addition, the cries of the native Cajal and squealing from the hogs who survived the wrecks created an eerie chorus whenever ships passed by. Fast forward about a century, and the island still wasn't settled yet, apart from a few short stops. But the English ship, the Sea Venture, ran aground on the reefs during a particularly violent storm. The survivors made it to Bermuda, where they survived on palmetto nuts and wild hogs and cows. After around 10 months, they managed to rebuild their boats and sail on to the New World, or America. The vital supplies these ships carried helped to establish the first foreign settlement in the New World, known as Jamestown. Without them, sickness and starvation would have quickly ended the venture. In fact, one of the survivors from the wreck was John Rolfe the man whom the Disney movie Pocahontas is based on. Even Shakespeare mentioned Bermuda, as many believe the Tempest is based on this wreck. Shame they don't teach that in your history lessons. But I digress. Three people stayed in Bermuda when the survivor journeyed on, having built settlements there throughout the ten months, allowing the British to officially claim the colony as theirs. Bermuda has many stories woven into its history for such a small place about life during slavery and afterwards. Too many to recount for one video. For example, 239 years ago today, the American army and high-ranking Bermudian men corresponded about an attack on Bermuda as part of the American Revolution. But enough history. Let's move on to part four. What does it look like? The first thing you'd expect when I say semi-tropical island is palm trees and beaches. And you'd be right, we have a lot of those. They are beautiful pink sand beaches, formed by ground-up coral that surrounds our island. Because of these reefs, we have awesome shipwrecks to visit as well. The ocean is part of the landscape, and you're never too far away to be able to get to it with a quick walk. The urban areas are a blend of traditional Bermuda buildings and more modern setups. The old architecture shows great history, but often modern installments are also in place. The wildlife is also a major part of Bermuda. The old railway trail is now a nature walk and connects the majority of the island. That, combined with many parks and conservation islands, means that nature is never far off. The Bermudiana flower, the endemic cows, long tails, Bruna skink, and the endemic subspecies of bluebirds are all carefully preserved, along with underwater wildlife. And of course, there's plenty to do, which brings me to part five. 
Obviously, we have every and all sorts of water and beach related activities. Cliff jumping, diving, snorkeling, kayaking, jet skiing, sand castle building, and more. The reefs and shipwrecks are amazing underwater locales, and we rarely get sharks. Rarely. We also have lots of caves, both underwater and above water. Some are very touristy, others you can discover for yourself. This is because the island is made up of limestone and is very easily eroded. You can visit all the natural sites, but the man-made architecture is also pretty cool. All the old buildings and monuments from back when we were first settled. And of course, there's the modern shops and buildings you can visit as well, such as the aquarium and zoo, or dolphin quests, or just wander around the towns. Now, on to part 6. What's life like? Well, it's much like any other place in the Western Hemisphere, and I'm really lucky to live here. But it's the small quirks that make it different from any other place, that make you really fall in love with it. The way we catch rainwater with our roofs, so every building has a painted white roof, but the buildings themselves are all painted bright colors. The sound of tree frogs at night and whenever it rains, which probably drive tourists mad, but for many of us, sound like home. The codfish and potatoes every Easter, and you can always see the homemade kites every Good Friday. The Bermuda Day and Christmas parades, which everyone loves, and the hardcore fans stake out a spot along the roof for a week or more beforehand. The way the gum bays do performance, and everyone loves watching it. The friendly rivalry between Somerset and St. George's fans every Cricket Cup match holiday. The way the majority of us can't stand below 21 degrees Celsius, but have a good tolerance for the human heat. The really colloquial Bermudians, like the beautiful instead of beautiful, and the onion accent. Everything hurts, the only bread around the corner off the hill. The way it feels like everyone knows everyone, and people are just so friendly. Just the general sense of community and pride. And how at the end of the day, we all come together as Bermudians. That's not to say Bermuda isn't without its problems. Which brings me to part 7. Racial tensions can be problematic, just like everywhere else. There's bigotry, just like in other countries, especially since it's a conservative place in general. Plus, being an island provides a special set of problems. Hurricanes are common. But at the end of the day, it's my home. And I'm so lucky to live in a beautiful place like this. Which brings me to part 8. I feel that many of us need to appreciate our lives so much more. And also experience new cultures and places. It makes us see our lives with a new perspective and consider the things we take for granted. That's why I wanted to share my home with you. Show you the things that make my home mine. And I'm sure I miss so many little quirks that are unique to my island. But because it's my home, I don't know how distinctive they are. And because there's so much you can possibly fit it all into a 10 minute video, there's a lot I skimmed over. So if you want to learn more about the geography and history that I omitted, or more about the culture or the things you can do, feel free to DM me, comment on this video, or ping me in the Secret Siblings 2.0 channel. Because, yeah, this is basically one big plug. Come to Bermuda, you'll love it here. And now for part 9, the Bermuda Triangle. No one really knows the truth, so thank you for watching. Just kidding, I wouldn't leave you hanging, even though all we can do is have theories. The ones that sound most plausible to me are as follows. 1. Methane gas bubbles under the ocean rise to the surface periodically, causing boats to be swallowed up and planes to combust. 2. There's a difference between North and True North that we didn't differentiate between back then that could cause compasses and other navigation equipment to malfunction. 3. Let's be honest, tech back then wasn't the best, so it could easily glitch. Most of these theories aren't specific to Bermuda's location, but it's plausible if you consider that mysterious disappearances happened in other pockets in the Bermuda Triangle. We just choose to fixate on Bermuda. Of course, I'm always down for the truth to be that it's a tetrahedron or a bar or countless of other theories. Or maybe I live in Sweden. Julia, I'll see you tomorrow.